million two uh, two hundred seventy one thousand five hundred. That's our uh, direct labor budget. Now let's go to the manufacturing overhead budget on the other side of the cheat sheet. So. Similar to the three and four, our first line is going to be the production budget. First, let's go to the given information. At five, HMS Round Belly Inc.'s production department has developed the following manufacturing overhead budget using the budgeted production. Note that variable overhead cost per boat is expected to be $1.46, and fixed overhead costs are expected to be uh, $376,548 per quarter. Okay, so we start. Uh, similar with uh, three and four, like I said, because we're going to go production budget. Now, under the production budget is the raw materials purchasing budget, the direct labor budget, and the manufacturing overhead budget. We take budgeted production, which is for Q1, it's 2000, uh, sorry, it's 25,380, times our variable overhead rate, which is the dollar forty-six. that's the given, plus our fixed manufacturing uh, overhead. You, you add those two together, you get a total budgeted manufacturing overhead cost of $413,513. You do the same for Q2, do the same for Q3, do the same for Q4, and ultimately you get to the annual total of uh, $1,654,475. Now, let's jump over to six. At six, we're going to come up with a budgeted manufacturing cost per boat, because now that we have uh, raw materials, direct labor, and overhead, we can... Uh, we know that total cost, well we can divide by the total units to come up with a, a total per unit cost. So budgeted cost of raw materials per boat, 45 pounds times 89 cents per pound, that's $40.05. Budgeted cost of direct labor per boat, that's 7.5 hours times 20 hours, that's $150 per boat. Budgeted variable manufacturing overhead per boat is $1.46, that was a given in uh, number 5. Budgeted fixed manufacturing overhead per boat is the total manufacturing overhead, uh, one. 1505832 divided by total number of units, which is 101810. That gives us a budgeted fixed manufacturing overhead per boat of $14.79 for a total cost per boat of $206.30. From six, let's go to seven. Take budgeted units from one, budgeted sales, and budgeted manufacturing costs from six. Calculate the cost of goods sold budget. All right, that's pretty easy. Take budgeted sales from one, 24000 for Q1. 41,250 for Q2, uh, 12,600 for Q3, uh, 23,800 from Q4. Budget manufacturing cost per unit, well, we calculate that over here at six. It's simple multiplication. Come up with a total annual cost of goods sold of uh, $20,970,457. Now, let's move to eight. Because uh, if you recall, under the raw material, uh, uh, so it goes sales budget, production budget, then we got raw materials purchase budget, direct labor budget, manufacturing overhead budget, and below that we got budget of cost of goods sold. That's what we just did seven. Now let's go to eight, which is a selling and general or selling and administrative cost budget. All right. HMS Round Belly Inc.'s management has estimated that variable selling expenses will be $25 per boat sold. Fixed administrative costs are estimated to be uh, $1,500,000. Forty-five thousand per quarter for the budget of the year. All right, so that's pretty basic. We got our budgeted boat sales is twenty-four thousand. We got that from one, um, uh, and then for Q two it's forty-one thousand two hundred fifty. Q two, uh, Q three is twelve thousand six hundred, and Q four is twenty-three thousand eight hundred. Those are all given at one, you know, from our marketing department. Our variable selling expense per boat is twenty-five dollars. That's a given. So we, our total variable expenses is multiplication. Then our fixed administrative expenses was given. So on a quarterly basis, we've got our total selling and administrative costs. And uh, for, on an annual basis, $8,721,250. Now, from nine, uh, from eight, let's go to nine. Taking budgeted sales revenue from one, budgeted cost of goods sold from seven, and budgeted selling and administrative costs from eight, prepare a budgeted operating income statement. Okay, so we got budgeted sales revenue. We took that from one. Uh, less budgeted cost of goods sold. We took that uh, from seven. And then uh, we get a budgeted gross margin. For Q1, that budgeted gross mar margin is $3,808,785. Less our budgeted selling and administrative costs, which we get from up here at eight, that's $2,145,000. So we get a budgeted operating income for Q1 of $1,663,785. Do the same thing for Q2, Q3, Q4, and we come with an annual total of $7,410,540, $543 um, of net operating income. From nine, let's go to 10. HMS Round Bellies Inc. Uh, cash collections are different from sales, right? Because 
we're giving, we're extending credit. So when we make a sale, we're not going to get that cash right away. It goes into accounts receivable, and then we're going to collect it at a later date. So HMS Roundbelly Inc.'s cash collections are different from their sales because Roundbelly's sales are on credit terms with its customers. Roundbelly extends uh, 2010 net 30 day payment terms to its customers. Roundbelly's historic collection experience has been that they collect 75% of cash during the quarter of the sale. 23% in the following quarter, and 2% is uncollectible. Assume that operating uh, uh, the opening accounts receivable balance was 1,593, and it was fully collected in Q1. Okay, so let's start with that. Fully collected in Q1, so accounts receivable at 1,1 was uh, 1,593,000. We collected all of that, so that goes into our annual total of cash collected. Now, Q1 budgeted sales, we get that information from number one. That's from our marketing department. We're only going to collect 75% of that in Q1. We're going to collect 23% of it in Q2, and we're never going to collect 2% of it, right? It goes to bad debt. Q2 budgeted sales we get from number one. 75% of that $15 million, 56250 we collect in Q2. 23% of it we collect in Q3, the next quarter. And then 2% of it we never collect. And so on and so forth until we get to Q4. Budgeted sales equals uh, 8687000 that, 75% of that we collect in Q4, and then 23% of it is going to be our ending accounts receivable balance because we don't collect it, right? Um, and then 2% of it we never collect. So our ending accounts receivable is equal to 23% times the 8687000 That equals $1,998,010. That's going to be our ending accounts receivable because we still haven't collected that. Um, and then our total cash receipts is equal to this total um, line of... Uh, annual total over here, which is $35,955,195. Now, move to 11. HMS Round Valley Inc.'s accounts payable department informed management that they tend to pay approximately 65% of raw materials purchases in the quarter purchase and the remaining 35% in the next quarter. Assume that uh, the opening accounts payable balance was uh, $355,764. Round Valley pays all direct labor and manufacturing over a cost in the quarter incurred. Assume that depreciation is $465,000 per quarter. Round Valley pays selling and administrative costs in the quarter incurred. Assume that Round Valley has outstanding has outstanding a note payable that has a balance on one one of four million five hundred thousand. The the note bears interest at 10% annually, and Round Belly repays 500000 at the end of each quarter. Assume that Round Belly pays a quarterly dividend to its shareholders of 10% of operating income. Further assume that in Q3, Round Belly purchases an additional aluminum molding, additional aluminum molding equipment for its facility, costing $2,360,000. Take budgeted raw materials payments from uh, three, Budgeted direct labor payments from four and manufacturing overhead from cost from five. Okay, that was a, that was a lot of information. Let's break it down. So we got the first thing we're going to start with is the budgeted direct materials purchase. So we take that from three. We know what each quarter we we, we have to. Um, produce a certain amount of boats. In order to produce a certain amount of boats, we need a certain quantity of aluminum. And to, in order to get that aluminum, we need to purchase it. So our purchasing budget is uh, uh, for Q1 is $1,100,000. $125,229. But the, the accounts payable department told us they only pay 65% of that um, in the current quarter. 35% is paid at the end of the quarter, or sorry, the next quarter. And, and from the given information, we knew that in Q1, we pay the previous accounts payable from last year, 355764 So the total cash, the total cash that we're paying for raw materials in Q1 is $1,000,000. Uh, 87,163. So we purchase something, but similar to our accounts receivable, we don't pay for it all right away. We pay for 65% of it now, 35% of it later. Um, all right, what else happens? Direct labor, budgeted direct labor, we need to pay that right away. Our workers aren't going to be happy if we don't pay them. We can't pay them 65% now, 35% later. We need to pay them 100%. So 100% of our direct labor costs from four we put here. And then the, the given says that we uh, pay 100% of our budgeted overhead costs right away. So that we put here. Less our, we, we're going to add back depreciation expense because it's non-cash. So we're trying to prepare a cash disbursements budget, right? That's 11. Uh, so we're informed that, well, we're, the information given is that depreciation is a non-cash, so we need to add it back. Um, budgeted selling administrative costs, we get that um, from uh, 8 over here. We know that we pay that right away. But then we've got interest on debt, repayment, uh, uh, repayments on debt, dividend payouts, uh, this information and then capital purchases. Well, so if you go up here to 12, 
you can see how I'm calculating the interest payments. This you might be given and need to calculate, so I'll walk you through the equation really quickly. Pretty much, we're taking our principal outstanding times our interest rate to get our interest payment, and I'm, I'm reducing the principal outstanding each month because we have to pay 500000 of it per month. So that's how we calculate our interest payment. That goes here, less our payment on the note, and then a 10% dividend of uh, operating income is 10% of what we have here at 9. So this is very simple. All this information we get from the other schedules, but at the end of the day, we see that our total cash disbursements for Q1 is going to be $7,766,554. All that information came from the other budgets. Uh, so in Q2, we get the same information. Q3, something different happens, so we make a capital purchase. So anyway, we take our, our raw material purchases, 65% of it we pay now, 35% of last year's purchase, or last quarter's purchases we pay. We pay our, uh, we pay our, our direct labor, we pay our employees, we pay our uh, manufacturing overhead costs, we add back our depreciation, we pay our budgeted selling and administrative costs, then we pay our interest, then we pay our down our note, we uh, we pay our dividend and then we pay 2.3 million, or sorry, 2 million 360 thousand to buy new equipment. That's cash out. We know we're we're expecting it. That's part of the budget. So we need to then we need to include it. So take all that information at the end of the year. Total cash that goes out the door is 33 million 359 thousand 742. All right. So go to 13. HMS Round Valley's East cash budget. Cash balance at, at 1 1, beginning of the year, was $1,392,156. Take cash receipts from 10, right here, uh, and then disbursements from 11, right here, on a quarterly basis, and we come up, so our beginning balance is given. It, we add our cash receipts, subtract our, our disbursements, we get our ending cash balance, so on and so forth, till at the end of the year, we come up with an ending cash balance of $3,987,609. All right, pretty clear how all this flows. Um, the information's it's all linked. You can see it all. You can see how it all flows. Now, from that information, let's prepare a budgeted balance sheet uh, down here at 14. Assume only raw materials are okay. Assume only raw materials are in inventory. No other accounts payable other than inventory raw material purchases, and that and that the only long-term liability is the note payable. Okay, that information is uh, important because. Look, our cash balance equals to three million nine hundred eighty-seven thousand six hundred nine. Our accounts receivable, we get that information from ten down here at the bottom with the asterisk. It says ending accounts receivable equals, you know, obviously it's twenty-three percent of Q4 sales because that's been collected in the next period. So that's what our accounts receivable is sending is. Inventory, the two hundred thirty-four. If you flip over on the cheat sheet, that's what it says our raw material ending balance needs to be. So that's what's in ending inventory. Our long-term assets, uh, th that number is made up because we really didn't have that information in here. But anyway, it includes the 2.36 million that we purchased. But that's a, that, uh, so long-term assets is made up, but it's put in there for demonstration purposes. Accounts payable, we get that from our disbursements, right? We pay 35% of the current quarter's purchases next quarter. That's what that amount equals to. And then we have our note payable, note payable outstanding. Um, well, we would have paid uh, 500000 of it in Q4, but in tw it's not included in the 12 because I needed to calculate the interest on the, uh, the 3 million because that's what we paid that quarter. But anyway, we would have paid 2 million of the 4 or 5 million, so we get three, uh, two and a half million as our ending note payable. Uh, total liabilities is equal to uh, our accounts payable plus our note payable, and then owner's equity, well, it's just a plug. It's just there for demonstration purposes, but because the equation needs to equal assets equals uh, liabilities plus owner's equity, uh, that's the difference between the assets and the liabilities. Anyway, that's how you prepare a budget, master budget, operating budget, financial budget, cash budget, you know, sales budget, production budget, how all that flows together. It's important to know how they all interact, but uh, it's very mechanical, and it all flows to these different, um, uh, different schedules. That's uh, lesson seven.